prizes here. Step on over here and, 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 and hit, take this mic right here and uh, step over this way a little bit. Let's see. There we can see. We don't have a cameraman right now, but oh, we can see. We can see we're in the in the uh, frame here. Oh yes. So, and, and your name? My name is Jack Nelson. Okay, Jack, and you have a product. Now we covered this in the uh, uh, the media. What what was that thing called? You guys did? Yes, the media the, release on the new product showcase. Yeah, we we've got that on. We we've got your actual presentation from over there. Oh, thank you. I don't you. know what time it played, but it's going to play. Uh, several times over the next few days. Oh, but let's let's look at the product. This is a new product that oh, thank you. That you guys introduced here. What is this thing? Well, Tom, this is a uh, patented design. This is a yeah. very short antenna that allows you to put on your vehicle and go inside garages, parking garages, underhangs. Yeah. Most of them that you wouldn't be able to otherwise with long antennas. Okay, what frequency? We're not talking about 160 meters here. No, we? not in this case. We're no. not talking 80 meters. No. Well, what is no. this? We're talking about 2 meters, uh -huh. 220, and 440. Okay. Now, as we're all familiar with, when you normally take a 2-meter antenna and shorten it down to about 7 inches like this, it uh -huh. doesn't have much efficiency, and, and, and it's very narrow and banded. But right. This is a very special design. It's a patented design. And what it does, Tom, is it allows you, by using um, somewhat of a Tesla coil kind of an idea, but uh, sort of like Tesla on steroids, really. It's a yeah. spiral sheet with a dielectric inside, creating a magnetic resonator, and there are two of them in there. So therefore, you now have a very short antenna that not only works well on the entire 2 meter, 220, and 440 band, but it also increases your reliable range. The way it does that mm -hmm. is this, and I, I, I'm almost sure. done. Thank you for yeah, the time. No I problem. appreciate this today. Hello, everybody. Um, as it turns out, uh, most of your antennas out there, 99% of them are electric field antennas. Certainly the electromagnetic wave has magnetic component, but they don't utilize them very well at all. Then on the other hand, you have a few antennas like small loops like we've seen around here uh -huh. uh, today, and they utilize the magnetic field, very low noise. Well, here you have an antenna that when you're losing the signal uh, in the multipath environment, driving along and it flutters and you lose it, you capture it back with the magnetic field. So it utilizes both the electric and the magnetic field in a very unusual way. Well, that's cool, and I'm glad you guys have 220 on here. You know, mo most of your antennas are 2 meters and 440. I'm glad you made it a tri-band. Tom, that's a very good point. Yeah. Initially, I also made it dual band because, uh -huh. of course, we all know that the 440 and the 2 meter, they're harmonics. Yeah. Um, but um, by adding an extra magnetic uh, field resonator in there, I was able to capture the 220 band very well, all the way from 219 to well, 225. 220 is getting very popular in, in a number of cities. I know where I live in, in the Memphis area, we have uh, very nice 220 repeaters, and uh, it's kind of changed to get off the two meter and stuff where they're getting really crowded. Yes. So, yeah, uh, 220 is a nice band. It's a really nice band. I'm glad you built, built that in here. And, Tom, I appreciate the fact that you made note of the connector. Yes, this yeah. is an NMO connector, and you see it's a phospho-bronze-style leaf connector. So yeah. you don't have the problem that sometimes you do with the very small spring-loaded style. When uh -huh. you, with those, when you put any kind of wattage in it in, over any period of time, yeah. they can actually burn, and then you lose your good connectivity. This one is, uh, is much better for that. Oh, and by the way, Tom, yeah. it's all made in the USA. Every uh, single component. That's, uh, that's cool. Now, I, I would imagine an antenna like this, of course, uh, it's not going to have the gain, is it, that, that you know, your typical, you know, five-eighths wave. Five-eighths wave is going to have, right? <laughs> oh, you're Tom, gonna... you're absolutely right. See, yeah. one would lose credibility if one tries to start saying, well, this has, you know, increased reliable range, so therefore it has 5 dB or 8 dB. No, this is a unity gain antenna, but the yeah. power 
is in the diversity. So when yeah. you're going along and, and, and say you're at your edge of the 95% reliable range, you know, and you want to get that extra range reliably rather than losing the signal, well, mm -hmm. you can put a higher gain antenna on there. And sometimes that works, but really only when you're line of sight or near line of sight. When you're non-line of sight, the great advantage comes in the diversity. Just like just like wireless routers, you know, for mm -hmm. 2.4, they used to have one antenna and then a real long one. Then they put two on there and four on there because the power is in the diversity, not in the gain of the antenna. Right. That's what happens in the dynamic, obstructed environment we live in, both in the car as well as even base station. This can be used as a base station antenna, very low profile for housing associations, in your attic, whatever, with a nice base station adapter kit. And on the site, there's all kinds of ways uh, of installing this. Mm hmm Looks great. Hope you uh, great success with it. Well, I thank you so much. Presently, Ham Radio Outlet and Universal here uh, stock this product. There are some additional uh, resellers coming online yeah. and a couple on the website. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Well, Tom, it was a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's about the same yeah, length. Yeah, it's about the same. Thank you so much.